Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna give you a quick update on the latest changes to financing in Canada, okay? We've got these new stress test rules which came into effect on June 1st, 2021. And thanks to Dahlia Barzum and Streetwise Mortgages for sponsoring today's video. So in today's video, I wanna talk about what this new stress test rule really absolutely means. Secondly, I wanna talk about the impact on purchasing power and affordability for housing prices. And thirdly, I want to talk about strategies that you can use to increase your purchasing power. And I also want to give you my closing thoughts on how this could affect housing outlook. So here's what the stress test means that took an effect June 1st, 2021. See, in Canada, we've always had the stress test. In fact, we had it starting in around 2018. And back then, you had to qualify for a higher interest rate. Despite whether or not you had a 20% down payment, it didn't really matter. You still had to qualify for this higher interest rate. Well, recently, they bumped this interest rate to even a little bit higher. So what this means is that every time you apply for a mortgage, whether it's a bank or whatever lender you're choosing, Bank of Canada will force you to qualify for this higher interest rate for your mortgage payment. So it doesn't matter if you get a lower interest rates with the banks for your mortgage, the Bank of Canada stress tests you with the higher interest rate. So the best way to explain this is probably use an example. Say you had a $550,000 property that you're super interested in and you know, hey, you got to put a 20% down payment, no problemo. But you're looking at the lender's rates and you're like, oh, I could get like one and a half percent interest rates on a 30 year term. So that's awesome. So you go to the bank and you're like, okay, I want to get one and a half percent on a 30 year term. And they're like, okay, in order for you to qualify for that mortgage, we're still going to have to do the stress test. Now, in order for you to get approved for that mortgage, you're going to have to check the stress test. And the stress test is you either can afford the payments at the Bank of Canada's benchmark rate, which is 5.25% or 2% on top of whatever lending rate that the bank is giving you. So it's either whatever, whichever is higher, but the maximum is 5.25%. And it makes sense because Bank of Canada just wants to make sure that you can afford higher interest rates and higher mortgage payments. So what does this all mean in terms of purchasing power, in terms of taking equity out of your properties? Well, it has a, a little bit of a dent, okay? It's about four to 4.5% 4 in lower purchasing power. That means before June 1st, you would have had, you know, about four to four and a half percent more that you could have afforded, but now we have less. So less, meaning four to four and a half percent less affordability and qualifying for that mortgage. But I'm going to give you some strategies, okay? Thanks to Streetwise Mortgages actually giving me strategies because they are the experts, not me. Number one, re-amortize the debts that are in your way. So if you have that car payment or a couple car payments are in the way, you got to restructure it maybe into one loan, considering it putting into one loan so that you don't have these extra payments going down and paying your car payments because it's all about your cash outlay. And when you amortize your loan, then you could kill two birds with one stone because you reduce your cash outlay and you increase your purchasing power. Second strategy is paying off unsecured loans. Okay. If you have that loan against your credit card or I don't know, that extra loan that you did on your Peloton, whatever it is, look at paying it off. Maybe you're on this um, payment plan to pay off your credit card loan and you're paying interest payments only, or you're doing a principal plus interest. I think credit card debt is always, always bad news. So it's always a good thing to pay off your credit card debt every single month. But I was just trying to get at like, um, the banks qualify your balance differently. Okay. They look at not only, Hey, the different payments that you're making against your credit card or against your Peloton bike, but they also look what balance is remaining. And when they look at the balance, they say, Hey, we're going to take 3% of the balance and consider that as still your cash outlay. So that's why you absolutely just, it's a good news, a good thing to pay off your credit card debt and just pay out all those loans that are unsecured so that you increase your purchasing power. So the third strategy is a more advanced strategy, but you should know about it. It's about 
rejuggling your HELOC and your mortgage, okay? Now, I know a lot of you already know that if you have a HELOC, you only need to make interest payments only. But in order to qualify for a new mortgage and try to maximize your purchasing power, well, they look the banks will look at your HELOC a little bit differently. They don't look at it like, hey, just make interest payments only. They'll look at it as a new mortgage. They'll think, okay, if you had a HELOC of $100,000 against your home and you're only paying interest payments only, well, unfortunately, they're going to look at it a little bit differently. They're going to look at the 100K and they're going to say, oh, okay, we're going to take the 100K, amortize it over a 25 year term and use an interest rate of 5.25%. So what this means is that they're basically making your HELOC into a mortgage and putting it at a new interest rate. So which really, really reduces your purchasing power. So the best way to do this is rolling that HELOC into your mortgage so that you get a lower interest rates and you got fixed payments so that you can in increase your purchasing power for your next property or your next home. Fourth strategy is topping up your income. Okay, the way this works, especially if you have rental properties or you're a self-employed business owner or you're an entrepreneur, well, you know that there's different ways of stating your income. Okay, with rental properties, you could have um, market opinion of rent rather than the actual rental income that you're collecting, which would, could qualify you with a better mortgage. Or maybe you are like a business owner like me and you only declare dividends as your personal income, but your business actually collects more revenue and has retained earnings. So there's a different way of stating your income. Or maybe you're an entrepreneur where you don't have a corporate structure, but you do have you know, other side hustles. Well, there's another way to qualify as new income for you. So there's a lot of different strategies where you could boost your income and increase your purchasing power. Now, the fifth strategy, which is proactive planning, okay, which is now restructuring your property portfolio to maximize the equity, to maximize the income, to look at considering changing lenders so that you can um, increase your cash flow, maybe refinance, look at different interest rates. And the paperwork is just horrendous, so horrendous. So if you need an opinion on how to restructure your uh, property portfolio, or you need advice on how to maximize and put yourself in the best position to qualify for your next mortgage, then you got to talk to Streetwise Mortgages and they are providing a free consultation to anyone who clicks on the link below. So what do I think this will do to future home prices, okay? Well, I'm gonna say that I cheated a little bit. I actually just looked at Kenyan Real Estate Association and they forecasted that home prices later in the year are going to stabilize. See, last year, um, compared to this year has actually been a 30% increase on average across Canada. But they're actually forecasting about 19% increase overall compared to last year, which means that they're expecting later in the year housing prices to stabilize. And I think this makes complete sense. If you lose four to four and a half percent purchasing power, then you're going to get a little bit of a dent on housing prices. But then maybe this will happen much later in the year because we're still experiencing a huge problem in the housing market, which is not enough homes are being listed. So this is causing a temporary increase in housing prices, but I don't think it's sustainable. This is like to me, a little bit scary seeing housing prices surge so much over just one year. I'm expecting like, hey, if it slows down a little bit later this year, that would be super, super healthy. One of the worst things that could actually happen is, um, which I've seen in the past in Ottawa, is that housing prices go up really, really fast and then it does nothing for the next five years. So your housing prices just go kind of flatlining. Or worse, maybe you're in Toronto and Vancouver markets or even Hamilton where housing prices could temporarily drop over the next few years. Now, I'm not talking about like anything like the financial crisis in the United States where we had the subprime mortgage deal. No, no, we don't have any of that. But I would say I would not be surprised if housing prices actually stayed pretty flat for the upcoming future. And already Canadian Real Estate Association is predicting that later in the year, housing prices are gonna start slowing down. We're actually only going to increase by 19% compared to last year. But in reality, we've increased 30%. Anyways, I hope you found this video super helpful. If so, give me a thumbs up and subscribe below. I'll see you in the next video.